Welcome back everyone to part two of the buying a house FAQ. These were questions that uh, apparently are the most popular questions or, or the most asked questions per Google. So if you don't have these questions, apparently a lot of other people do. So let's get it going. How many houses should I view before purchasing? Well, there's no there's no, there's no rule in that. And what I will sometimes encourage people of, especially if I can tell that they might be someone who has these tendencies, there are folks that they just really want to go look at a lot of stuff before they make any decisions. And the strategy doesn't make any sense because you're like, you're assuming that like car shopping, for example, that like, hey, that w whatever, there's like 20 Toyota Tundras that are all the same. And at any point, like I could get that truck. It doesn't matter if I buy it today, I can come back a week from now and get a truck that's just like that because they're just out there. Well, houses aren't like that. Houses are all different. So if you're like, hey, we're gonna go look at 20 houses over the course of the next month and then decide which one we wanna make an offer on, well, it doesn't work that way because a lot of the houses that you looked at, like they're not just gonna sit on the market forever. Sometimes they might sit longer than others, but it's like, no, the houses move, they, they sell. So there's no point in playing this like, well, we wanna look at 10 houses before we choose anything. No, I encourage people, look, you might walk into the first house that we look at and you might go, house is great. House is great, it checks all the boxes. Like the mature thing to do is to go, the house is great, it meets all of our criteria, let's go for it. And I've had that happen a couple times. It's not super common, but especially if you have very specific tastes and, and something just checks the boxes, go for it, man. Like, don't play the game of, uh, it's it's like the online dating game right now where it's just like the constant never-ending search for something better. It's like, don't, don't play that game. If something's, I'm now comparing uh, uh, dating to, to houses, but, um, you know, but but the analogy holds up, which is like, if it checks your boxes, go for it, man. Like, put the ring on it. Like, stop constantly looking for the next best thing. Like, that is a, a tendency that people wind up on. So, look, if on house number two, it's great, go for it. Like, so, so, like get, get, get decisive about it. Next question. What happens if I decide to back out of a deal? Well, that depends on at what point in the timeline you decide to back out of the deal. Um, I'll give you Utah example since I live in Utah. And for those of you watching this who are like, what is the point of this channel? The point of this channel is that I have a real estate business called 1911 Syndicate. We're kind of a, a real estate brand that's, or, you know, a bit more of a conservative real estate brand, military law enforcement, um, you know, non-pretentious, right? We just work with a lot of like good red-blooded Americans, right? We're not trying to like, you know, it, it like drop the pretentious thing and like, can we just like work together but not have it be like suit and tie and me try to use big fancy words to try to impress you that's what the 1911 that right there that's what the 1911 syndicate is and we're nationwide so you let us know if you need help we'll have the website link below but i'm going to give you uh per the question here what happens if i back out of a deal i'm based in utah so i'm going to i'm going to tell you the utah example depends on when it happens let's say a week from now you decide to back out of the deal the answer is nothing. You just back out of the deal. You get your earnest money back. That's it. Walk away. Move on. Let's go find the next house. Um, and that generally would be the case up for, for about 10 to 14 days where it's like, hey, there's really no consequence. You can just back out because you decided you didn't like the house and you can back out. Typically somewhere between that 14 and 21 days after you put it under contract. Now, largely there would be a consequence in the form of you can still back out, but you're going to lose a portion of your earnest money. And that portion would be determinate on how the contract is written. After, I'm just gonna say 21 days-ish, right? Um, again, you can still back out, but you're gonna lose your earnest money, right? So if you put $5,000 in earnest money down, eh, you're probably gonna lose it. That might not be a big deal to you. It might be your entire life savings, so it's a huge deal to you. So just just depends, right? You can almost almost always back out as a buyer. It's just going to be how costly was it for you to back out? That, that's what it's going to come down to. Next question. What is a mortgage and how does it work? So your mortgage is just your loan on the property. Unless you are someone who either won the lottery or is uh, just pretty wealthy, you are going to have, you are not going to be paying cash for the property. If you're paying 
cash for the property, then you don't have a mortgage payment. For those of us who are normal working human beings, right, you will have a mortgage. You will, on a $300,000 house, I'm going to put down whatever it is, uh, 30 grand, right? I put 10% down, and that means the remaining $270,000 I need a loan on because I don't have $270,000. So the bank's going to say, great, hey, we're going to look at your, or mortgage lender doesn't have to be, you know, a traditional bank, right? Like Bank of America or whatever, but the uh, bank, as I'm going to call it, is going to look at your credit and your uh, you know, work history and uh, all that kind of stuff, how much money you make and your debts and everything. And they're going to say, hey, based on that, um, yes, we will give you a loan. Here's what the interest amount will be on the loan, aka of the 70 grand. Here's the percentage that we're charging you to borrow that money and go down this path with you because chances are that mortgage is going to be for 30 years. Now you could do 15 years or, or things like that, but hey, for the vast majority of people, they're not. Dave Ramsey seems to be a fan of 15 year um, mortgages, but Dave Ramsey also is completely opposed to anyone ever having a credit card. And that's when he lost me, when I was like, bro, some boomer shit, dog. Like fucking people get points on credit cards. As long as you're disciplined, who gives a shit? But that's just me. Um, but that's how that's how a mortgage works. Last question: What does the process of using an escrow agent involve? So this term escrow agent, as it's worded here, you will hear it refer to a few different terms. I've never actually really heard of it, like an escrow agent. I usually hear a uh, escrow officer or a uh, title agent. Um, typically, like one of those two. But if you see like title rep, title agent, uh, or title officer, title agent, you know, escrow, you see where I'm going with it. It's all the same thing. What they do, they're like a independent, uh, neutral third party that is in charge of the transfer of funds, largely. Um, two, two main jobs I'll give you. Transferring of funds, right? Because when you, if I buy a house from you, right, and I'm buying your house from three, for 300 grand, right? Well, I don't just cut you a check, you know? And then I'm like, oh, the bank will square up with you for the rest. Like, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Like, someone's got to mediate the exchange of those funds. And that's what the title company does. They charge a small fee for it. It's really not that bad. Um, so that's one of the things that they do is the transfer of the monies. The next thing is really making sure that the house can, um, you know, legally be sold, that there's no liens on it, like tax liens if you haven't paid your taxes. So, hey, before... They can sell that house. They have to pay off their bill that they owe to the IRS. Shit like that, right? They're looking into that kind of thing to make sure that the house can legally be sold and there's not going to be any issues with it where you've got like a contractor coming out of you because he wasn't paid for doing the drywall work and, and things like that. Okay. So um, if you guys have any other questions related to buying a house, drop them below. It's actually uh, more fun asking or answering questions than it is just coming up with random shit to talk about because these are things that I think could uh, help you guys over the course of time. But like I said, if you need help, let us know. Um, 1911syndicate.com, um, our real estate company is, we're, we're a cool real estate company. You know, that's that's the deal. I, I often tell people, you know what? We've got the deadliest real estate clientele in the world. Um, and I probably, I think that that's actually pretty accurate. It's kind of gimmicky, but I think it's probably actually true because like we, we've just got a cool group of people that we get to work with. And man, there's some studs in there. And I like to think if you're watching this, you're a stud and you could come, you know, we, we, we could we could be friends. You know, we could be friends. So anyway, let us know if you need help. Subscribe to the channel, drop us a comment. We'll see you next time.